Okay, so let's have a very quick tour over some some useful functions in Python. Um, obviously, there are a lot of functions in Python, but I will be covering just a few of them. Then I think uh, with the passage of time, we will be covering more and more, but let's start. Um, a function, uh, or sometimes uh, particularly a built-in function, is, is basically a feature from the language that is supplied for the users to achieve particular task. For example, a round function. If you give uh, round, for example, round, let's say 4.6. This 4.6 is a floating point number, and rounding means make it as integer, uh, and uh, what round does is it finds the nearest integer to 4.6, and the nearest integer in this case is 5, because 5 is more closer to 4.6 than 4. However, if you call round, for example, on four point let's say three then the result will be four because four is more closer to 4.3 than five uh, so that's one use of round it rounds uh, basically uh, uh, rounds a floating point number to the nearest integer another uh, use of round is if you give another argument that that is called an argument to the function for example when you write print print let's say a this a is called argument to a function print. Similarly, round is a function, 4.6 is an argument. Round is a function, 4.3 is an argument. We will see functions in details and we will be writing our own functions as well. But for now, just, just peer that, just peer with me that functions are these kind of features that are available. However, we, we will be writing our own functions later on. So this particular function accepts two arguments. So round has two different kind of uh, implementation. One is when it accepts only one input argument, it returns the nearest integer to that. If it accepts a floating point number as well as another argument, like here we have three, that means uh, af uh, after point, after decimal, go to three places only and then round up, then round. For example, this 4.55, and then eight will be rounded based on its next value. If the next value is larger than five, then eight will go to nine and stop. If the next value is smaller than five, then eight will stay as eight and the result will be three decimal places after this. Um, so uh, let's practice this round function just on a Jupyter notebook very quickly. Let's see. Uh, so here we are. So let's say print round let's say 4.556 and in this case the result will be 4.5 and the reason is 4.5 when it's rounded up it stays to 5 and the reason is this 4.556 it is more closer to 5 than than 4 however if you if you just print round 4 point let's say 3 4 5 let's say and the result will be 4 the reason is 4.345 is more closer to 4 however if you call this round function with more than one argument for example 4.556789 let's say or with argument let's say 2 that means the result should be only two decimal places after the after the decimal point. So in this case, the result is 4.56. And the reason is this five is rounded based on the next digit and the next digit is larger than five. Hence, it is rounded up. So 4.56. If, however, um, I call this function for three, then what do you think? What will be the result? It will be 4.55 and the six will be rounded up based on this seven and it will become 4.557, yes. However, if for example, there will be a value at, at the place of seven, if there is a value, let's say three, then you call this function then 4.556 and then based on the next value three, the six will stay as six rather than going to nine and the result will be 4.556, yeah. So that's, a, that's, the, that's the round function basically. 
Another function is div mode. Uh, div mode function basically um, divides and returns quotient and and remainder. So in the next video, we will be uh, seeing this div mode in detail, uh, how it actually works and how uh, how it is useful. Um, so in, in this particular video, we saw round function. In the next video, we will see div mode. And there are a couple of more functions that we will see in the upcoming videos. So I hope to see you in the next video. So in the last video, we saw round function that sometimes accepts one argument and sometimes accept two arguments and behave accordingly. In this particular video, we are going to see another function, div mode, and it accepts two arguments, two different arguments, maybe same or different arguments, and it, it returns uh, two outputs, two numbers. Uh, it returns basically quotient and remainder. For example, in this particular case, the quotient is five, and the remainder is two because if five is divided by if 27 is divided by five the result is five but then the remainder is two and the result is returned in a kind of an ordered pair um, and, and these kind of uh, collection in which we have two or more elements we call these collection as tuple that we will see in detail when we will see the data structures uh, module of this course but right now, just bear with me that it returns two numbers, um, two elements, and the two elements are ordered in an ordered pair, um, which is called a tuple. A tuple is not just an ordered pair. It can have three more, three, four, five, or seven, or maybe several elements. But right now, we will uh, a tuple is just an ordered list, which we will see in detail. Um, so uh, let's see the working of the stiff mode function in, uh, in Jupyter Notebook. Let's see. So uh, let's say we have uh, uh, div mode. Uh, let's say, uh, for example, we have 34 and then we have, let's say 10 or maybe let's say nine. So what do you think? What will be the quotient and what will be the remainder? So nine, 18, 27, so three. Three is the quotient and the remainder is, remainder is seven. So three is quotient and seven is the remainder. So, um, and if you save the result, for example, if you save the result in a variable, let's say G. So if you see the G, the type of G, if you, if you just type the type of, if you just print the type of G, it's a tuple, which we will see in details. And if you see the contents of G, if you see the contents of G, the contents of G are three and seven. And if you want to access each element independently, then you can access the ele first element because the if there are multiple elements in uh, in a variable, normally that that kind of variables are called collections that we will see in detail later on. And these are the indexing the the positioning is start by zero rather than one. So G zero means the first element of G, which is three in this case, and the second element of G is one uh, at at one, which is seven. So this is basically, this is called the index or position of, of elements or data in, in this particular collection. We will see these indexing and, and all these kind of collections in detail uh, in, uh, in, the, in the data structures course when we will see arrays and strings and uh, different kind of uh, structures. But, uh, and div mode sometimes is, uh, is basically, uh, sometimes it is helpful. By the way, you can achieve div mode by uh, by another by another thing. For example, if you want to achieve div mode thirty four nine, you can do the same thing by let's say thirty four divided by uh, double divided by nine. That will give you a quotient, and the quotient is three. And further, if you write thirty four remainder nine, and that will give you the remainder that you need. So you can call that function div mode or you can use these two. There are multiple ways of doing the same stuff. Okay, so yes. So, so I mean, sometimes it is useful when you're coding and knowing this kind of function that returns quotient and, and uh, remainder. Okay, next function that is more useful is is instance, um, and we will see this function in the, in the next video. So hope to see you in the next video. Okay, um, this function is instance. It actually returns either true or false, and it just checks that uh, 
particular given data value belongs to this type or not. For example, if you want to check whether one has type integer, so you can check that using this function. Um, by the way, uh, you know that one is of type integer, then you may think that why on earth one should be interested in checking the type of one if somebody know it is integer. Sometimes um, we have certain variables and certain data is stored in it and we want to check the data inside it belongs to which kind of type. And in, in several cases, the value to this variable is not assigned by us. It may be read from some file or maybe uh, through input, a user gives some number or something like so. So sometimes it becomes important to check the type uh, of a particular variable. If we are ex if we are expecting a particular type of the input and the input is different, then this function might be helpful somewhere. Uh, either way, this uh, is a function available in Python and it checks whether the given value has a particular type or not. So is instance one int returns true? Is instance 1.0 integer that returns false maybe because this is a floating point number and you can check a particular value belongs to one of the several types or not. You can give several types in, in, a, in a tuple and you can check whether it belongs to this, uh, this or not. So um, let's go to Jupyter Notebook and see actually how it works. So by the way, this is the same notebook that we have, uh, that we are populating. Uh, so uh, hold on with me. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll be having one notebook complete. So is instance, is instance, let's say three, is that instance of integer? The result is true in this particular case. If for example, we check whether uh, is instance um, 3.4 is that an is that an integer the answer is no it is not an integer um, if for example we check if this is not an integer then maybe it is a float uh, the answer is yes or maybe we check that um, for example if that value is either float or integer if it is one of these then, uh, I mean, check that a particular value in this particular case, 3.4, whether it belongs to one of these types. Um, we can increase these types, for example. So let's say we, uh, we gave a complex number here and check is instance, let's say two plus three J, that's a complex number. And let's say we ask whether it is an integer or float or not. The result is obviously false and the reason is it is neither integer nor float or even if we give a string there str so it will still say no it is not not any of these but uh, maybe there is a complex data type if we see that that says yes because it is complex so sometimes this uh, is instance becomes really um, useful next function is power um, so power, you can, you can compute power by the way, using, using, for example, if you want to compute X raised to the power Y, you can use double star and that computes exactly X raised to the power Y or equivalently, you can call the function pow X comma Y, and that will give you the, the same result as this one. But power sometimes take three arguments as well. And in that case, it, it, uh, it performs, uh, the power function in a different behavior. So for example, if you supply three arguments, what it does, it it raise y to, it, it ra x raised to the power y, whatever the result is, then it takes the remainder by z and gives the result. So let's see um, the functioning of this power function in Jupyter Notebook. So let's say power, I want to compute two raised to the power four, the result is 16. No problem. 2 raised to the power 4. I can compute the result 16 this way as well. But here is another way. How can we use this? 2 raised to the power 4. Whatever the result is, then I want to take the remainder by, let's say, um, I want to take the remainder by 7. 2 raised to the power 4 is 16. Then if we take the remainder by 7, the result will be 2. And that's the result 2. So that's how you can use this power function. 
Uh, I'm just introducing you uh, some built-in functions that are available. There are so many functions that are available. I'm just getting you comfortable with these kind of functions so that in future, if you see another function that you have not seen here, you'll be able to use it um, and, and, and apply it. Um, so um, uh, in, in this particular video, we saw this uh, is instance function and this power function. Um, in the next video, we will see one more function that will allow you to take input from the user. Uh, so far, we are supplying values or assigning values to variables directly. What if on the fly, we want to give the values and those values should be assigned to the variables. So in the next video, we will see the function, we will see a function that will allow you to give input from the keyboard. Hope to see you in the next video.